Hello there, my name is Dave Allen. I'm good and geeky, and today I'm going to show you how to set up your terminal so that it looks good. First thing to do is to get oh my ZSH onto the terminal, and the terminal I'm using is iTerm, which is better than using the built in terminal from Apple. Let's get started. The first thing to do is to go to the Brave browser and go and get the install my OZSH now. You can get this from the uh, omyzsh.sh website. Let's get started. So the first thing to do is to get this command and to put it into the terminal. So I've pasted that into the terminal and I'm just going to press enter now and that will start installing it. And we're getting there. That was quick and easy. That's a good start. So this is what the terminal is looking like now. And we need to do something with this here to make it look a bit better. And for that, I'm going to use Power Level 10K. And we're going to go and find the URL to go and install that and get the instructions. So one of the first things it suggests that you do is to install the recommended font. Let's do that. That's the first one done. Click on install and skip again. So all the fonts are installed. Good start. OK, so the first thing we actually do is to install the Power Level 10K. So I'm going to copy that there and paste that in there. Do Command V, paste that in. I haven't got Homebrew installed. I need to install Homebrew. OK, so copy that to the clipboard. Let's go back into iTerm. Do Command V and install that. It takes a bit of time to install Homebrew, but you can wait. And while you're doing that, you can perhaps have a cup of tea. So let's go and have another look at the instructions, see what we've got to do next. OK, so I can go back now to this one here to start installing Power Level 10K. And this is the command that I've got to copy and put into this uh, terminal window. Let's put that in there. Off you go. And it says command not found brew. I've just installed homebrew. <laughs> because I've got to add homebrew to the path. I'm still not done with homebrew. Once again, select this one here. Then go back to this one here. Command and V to paste that in. And now it should work. Yay, we're in business. Cool, what? <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, so that's done. Let's go back to the instructions, see what we've got to do next. So now we want to do the configuration wizard. So what we're going to do next, if it doesn't configure automatically, or if it doesn't trigger automatically, is we need to run this p10k configure command. So let's get that, copy that, go back into this one here. It didn't do it automatically, so let's just set it off now. Command and V, and let's configure it. Oh, command not found. I think maybe what I have to do is I have to do a um, close down of the iTerminal and then restart again. I think that might work. Let's try that and see. Do a quit on that one there. Then open it up again. We'll tell it to check it automatically. Oh, here we go. We're into the thing. So it's asking us if I want to install nerd font and we'll say yes for recommended. I think I've already done it, but we'll leave it in there anyway. So we'll do yes. And it's looking for the kit. I actually found that it has a key to do it. So it's doing it all. So I didn't need to do that manually. I could have done it from this uh, installation set there, but it's uh, let it let it do its business. It's fine. It didn't tell me I needed to close the iTerm down and start it back up again to get this thing working, but it did need to be done. So we're back in business again. So it's telling me now that I've got to restart to term two, iTerm two. So let's do a command and Q and restart it. And we're back into the configuration again. So just follow these through. So does this look like a diamond rotated square? Yes, it does. Yes. Does this look like a lock? It does. Yes. And does that look like a Debian logo? Yes, again. These are all fairly similar to those, so we're just going to say yes to this one as well. And which way do we want this? I want to go for the rainbow. Let's go for number three on this one. And what do we want? Unicode or ASCII? I don't know. Which one do I want? Which one looks better? We'll go for Unicode. That looks better. And show current time. No, I don't think I need the current time, so I'm going to go for one on that one. Uh, angled. So this one here is where you choose which type of separator you want on this one here. And angled, I think, is the nicest looking one. So I'll go for angled. 
and the head part of it so this about here so how do you want that to finish and I'll look at the pointy one so I'll go for number one again on that one there the sharp one and then for the bit at the back here do, how do you want that do we want it flat blurred sharp slanted I think I'll go for slanted for a change do you want it on one line or two lines I like it better on two lines let's go for two lines let's press number two and then um, what's this prompt connection disconnected dotted solid we'll go for solid and do you want a frame on this as well let's go for frame full and do you want it lightest or darkest we'll go for number one with the lightest one do you want spacing prompt one prompt spacing go for compact or sparse I think we'll go for sparse we've got plenty of room to do that so let's go for number two on that one few icons or many icons we'll go for many icons let's have it looking as pretty as possible so we'll go for number two on that one there concise or fluent fluent let's go for number two enable transient prompt I really don't know let's have a thing what do we want on this one there yes or no yes I think <laughs> Okay, let's do yes. I think this can be changed at a later stage if you need to, but we'll go for yes on that one anyway. And we want verbose. Let's go for number one on this one here. Apply changes to the file, which is the config file, which is .zshrc. And we're going to say yes to that because we want all those changes to be made. So yes. So everything is looking good now. So you can see in this here now, we've got this looking really nice. Well, anyway, as you can see here, we've got this bit here. We've got the Apple logo in there. We've got the fact that it's in the home level and we've got the um, level app, which is the tilde mark there. So if I change to a different folder here, so if I do um, uh, CD documents, you can see now we've got documents in there instead. So that's kind of cool. And I can run the command in here. Let's go for LS and I get that. And I'm going to allow that. So here I've got it, so it's got it in a in a list like this, like a grid. And I'll be changing that so that it's set, so it's set up so it pulls in a list instead. Let's go for LL. So there you go. That's how to set up iTerm. And I've got it set up so that I've got power level 10K in there. And I've got oh my ZSH working. And so I've got a bit more configuring to do just to finish this off. But that's the starting point set up and done. I'm Dave Allen. I'm good and geeky. Now, if you haven't done already, Go and like and subscribe so you get more of these technical tips on your YouTube channel. Bye now.